Hi everyone. In this video, you will learn how the vertical transformations of a sinusoidal function affect its properties. Now, I've set up the graphing application to graph y equals a sine x plus d, where to start with a equals 1 and d equals 0. That means that the pink curve is the graph of just simply y equals sine x. Now, by adjusting the a value, you can see that the graph undergoes a vertical stretch about the x-axis. Now, recall from your previous studies that this type of transformation can be carried out by multiplying all of the curve's y-coordinates by the vertical stretch factor. In this case, each y-coordinate has been multiplied by 3, so the vertical stretch factor is 3. But you can also say that the amplitude of the graph is now 3. When the a value is negative, then what we see is a reflection in the x-axis. Even though the a value is at this point negative 1.6, we wouldn't say that the amplitude is negative 1.6. We would still say that the amplitude is just simply 1.6 because the definition of the term does not allow for amplitudes to be negative. Okay, now let's turn our attention to the d value. You can see when I adjust the d value that it controls the vertical translation that is applied to the curve. A positive d translates the graph upwards and a negative d obviously translates the graph downwards. When discussing sinusoidal functions, we use the term displacement to describe vertical translations. Now an important thing to notice about the d value as well is that the d value will lead you to the equation of the median. So if I reset the d value to zero, and let's say I add in the equation y equals the d value, then I will know exactly where the median is. So when we start with the median is at y equals 0. Now when I adjust that d value, the median goes, the median, I should say, goes with me. Right? So because a vertical translation, or in this case a vertical displacement, translates every point on the curve upwards or downwards, well the median also gets translated that many number of points or units upwards or downwards. So at the end of the day, if the d value is equal to 2.8, which is where it's at right now, then that means the median's equation is, is y equals 2.8. Right? On the other hand, if I were to slide this curve down to, say, negative 3.2, then if the d value is negative 3.2, the equation of the median is y equals negative 3.2. So we can use the a and d values to determine the maximum and minimum points of the function and thereby determine its range as well. All right, so uh, let's find out how to do this in a step-by-step -step fashion by working with a specific function. So what I'm going to do is I will reset the d value to 0, and a is already equal to 1, and we'll go from there. So let's say I want to figure out the maximum and minimum points on the function y equals 3 sine x minus 2. And once I figure those out, I also want to know what the range of that function is. So starting with my original function, y equals sine x, you can see that the maximum is 1 and the minimum is negative 1. So therefore, the range uh, would be all of those real numbers between negative 1 and 1. When I apply a vertical stretch factor of 3 about the x-axis, uh, you can see that my maximum point is now at positive 3, my minimum is at negative 3, and the range is everything in between those two points now. Okay, because the amplitude is 3 itself. Now, if I apply the vertical displacement of negative 2, going downwards, negative 2, then what you see has happened is that, whereas before, when my displacement wasn't applied, I was at 0. And so if you focus on the maximum point, going down to 3 minus 2 is equal to now a top value or maximum value of 1. And whereas before, when I was at 0, my minimum point was at negative 3, when I vertically displaced 2 units down, now negative 3 minus 2 is at negative 5. Okay? And so now my range is from negative 5 to positive 1. And in general, we can say that the maximum is equal to d plus a, while the minimum is equal to d minus a. And I'll just put that in here. In the last part of this video, let's take a quick look at how these same transformations affect the graph of y equals cosine x. So again, the a value affects the vertical transformation or the vertical stretch factor 
But uh, not only that, it also affects the amplitude of the graph. Okay? And if A goes negative, again, we have a reflection in the x-axis. When we talk about D, uh, again, D represents the vertical translation, or as we call it here, the vertical displacement of the graph. Um, the maximum and uh, minimum values are determined in the same way as before. If you add the amplitude to the median, right, so if you add the amplitude to the median, uh, or D plus A, you get the maximum point on the curve. And if you subtract an amplitude from the median, then you get the minimum point on the curve. And as before, these two values, the minimum and maximum value, serve as the limits of the range of the function.